Hello, Merry Saturday everyone, um, or happy whatever day you're watching this on. I wanted to show you my current project and this is definitely going to be a random video because I don't really know what I'm doing. What I'm trying to do is needle felt a figure of my old dog Bertie um, who unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, it was it was two years ago in May and my mum wants a figure of him for Mother's Day made out of needle felt but specifically she wanted one from um, a person who makes them as a business but it was a lot of money and I, I'm not saying don't support people running craft businesses completely support them please do but if you can't afford it and if you feel like you have the potential to be able to make something similar um then maybe try your hand at making one so that's what i'm doing so i just wanted to sort of talk to you about my my plans and then i'll make a video when I finished it to show you the finished product. So if you don't know what an Airedale Terrier looks like, that was what Bertie was, here are some sample pictures. I've got them from um, Google. And so Airedale Terriers are fluffy, um, oh, ah, they are fluffy, large terriers um, descended from, um, Otter hounds who are Ruby is currently dipping her paw in my water and then licking it. Funny cat. Um otter hounds were bred to hunt otters um in rivers. And so Airedales have got a fairly waterproof coat. It's very furry. They have a natural oil in their fur called, uh, called lanolin which is the same as what sheep have so they are fairly woolly which helps because obviously what you do in needle felt is felt wool um they can get very furry and very curly and fluffy when they need a haircut and when their hair is cut they often have um fluffy legs it's de left deliberately long but brushed so that it is fluffy which you could probably see on this one here but then sometimes they're very curly like this one here and I love that curliness and I've got a special wool used uh, for the curly effect on the top coat of my needle felt Bertie so um, that is what I'm hoping it will look like and this is what I've made so far so I, I've never done needle felting before and I've used a few YouTube videos to help to give me some basic knowledge about how to make them. And they were mainly um, by Felts by Philippa. I will link her channel in the description of this video. She does really good information and tutorial videos and that's where I got the knowledge for how to do the frame from and basic knowledge about felts and uh, doing faces and the tools that you need and that kind of thing. So I've ordered my goods from Sweet Pea Dolls which is a company here in the UK which has a lot of really nice quality wool in my opinion, my uh, opinion that I have absolutely no foundation for, but what I've been using seems great. The base wool, the, um, I can't remember what it's called, but core wool, core wool, yeah. This is what I'm using, needle wata wata, I think it's Japanese, I'm probably pronouncing wata wata wrong. It's 30 grams, so I thought that wouldn't be very much, but it's huge, and I've ordered two of them. So that's what this stuff is. And that is what I'm using for the actual core. So I'm, I'm currently building the structure of the body, um, trying to get it to be quite a nice hardness. I don't want it to be squishy. And then I'm currently um, doing the head and I need to do the legs. And the problem with doing the legs is that the wire gets in the way and I can't felt it very well. So I'm actually felting the wool for the legs separately and then putting it on the wire and then 
Um, so I'm, I'm felting it like a rectangle, leaving a fluffy side, which is what is going to be able to be felted to the other side of the um, kind of uh, folded over um, sort of sleeve of wool. And then I'm going to add to it because the problem I tried to do a leg before and the problem with it was that I didn't really have much wool when I just sort of wrapped wool around it and then tried to felt it on the wire. I didn't have much wool structure much substance to actually add more felt to but the good thing about needle felting is that you can keep adding wool until it's perfect um i've got some jewelry pliers that i had already bought for um for the wire and some old wire clippers i've got this um needle uh pen thing that you can use three two or one needles for um, and that's from clover and that seems great I've got the this one millimetre wire, which is uh, one of the sizes that you can use for making frames, but it's good that you can double it up for strength. Um, you can either use uh, one millimetre or maybe a slightly thicker wire, like a 1.6 millimetre, but I couldn't get that from Hobbycraft, where I ordered my, um, my wire from, and also some spare needles so these are the spare needles i'm using which i think are hobbycraft's own brand and the reason i bought more needles is because when you're using a wire frame the needles can break so i um deliberately bought three packs of needles in addition to the needles that i've already got just in case they broke because i have a limited time in which to make this because i need to make it by mother's day which is next weekend um what else have i got um i have got this beautiful curly wool and this is what i'm using for the actual top coat as i call it i'm sure there's an actual technical word for it in needle felting um that try to get that off my hand there we go that is the um, wool that will be used to actually cover this frame uh, this um base figure and that i deliberately chose because it is very much like the sort of uh curliness of an airedale oops um i meant to show you that picture there but actually that's that dog isn't very curly but um when they're shorn shorn like a sheep um when they're they're trimmed so that they're not, they don't have very thick fur. Airedale fur isn't extremely curly. It's more wavy. It's more sort of ripples of waves going down their back. And their legs can be very curly. It depends on how you groom your dog. Um, we obviously didn't groom Bert as much as these dogs. These are like beautiful um, dogs. I'm sure bred to be shown and we had Bert as a pet so we weren't that um, concerned about his appearance so um, we just brushed him when he needed it but that meant his fur got very curly which I really like so that's why this fur is beautiful and it is the same colour as his fur and then I've also got the dark brown version because even though Airedales are typically tan and black but had more sort of grey in his fur and even though this wool is called dark brown it is more grey which is fantastic because it, I think without actually having him here to look at I think it's identical to the colour of his actual back and neck hair so what I'm going to do with my figure is give him some more legs um, fix the, the paws I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that and um, continue with the head which has fallen on the floor um, I'm asking my brother for assistance in kind of figuring out what I need to do because he's really good with attention to detail so he's told me I need to um, ad adapt the head shape a bit and bulk up the, the neck here and obviously um Oh, the chin here and the neck isn't finished i need to actually be able to push the fluffy wool onto his chest or his you know this part here to be able to felt it on 
Um, so I haven't finished the neck. Um, so that will be four legs and a head. And then obviously I'll do the tail. Um, and that will be the basic structure. And then after that, what I'm going to do is look at pictures of Bertie and figure out what I need to do to make the figure look like him. So at the moment, this is basic Airedale figure. Um, and then afterwards, it will be what Bert actually looks like. And putting the top coat of wool on. That's Daisy and Jasper barking. And um, then Sweet Pea Dolls, the company who I bought the wool from, actually sell eyes and noses for your dog and cat figures. So <laughs> that's really cute. They're so cute, these little noses. They're like eight millimetres wide or maybe six millimetres wide. So I've got to measure to see what size nose I want and buy him some brown eyes. And then I will finish the figure and post a video to show you the finished figure and then I can take it into work and show everyone because I'm really proud of it and I, I showed a couple of people this half finished figure but um I want to show <laughs> some more people him because I'm really proud of it and I really do want to show my friends at work and then I'll give it to mum for Mother's Day um if you don't know what needle felting is, basically you get this lovely fluffy wool and you tear it um, so it, it tears off really easily. It's really going to be hard to do it in one with one hand but can you see how easily it's coming off? And then you use this to either wrap around your figure so that it is um, an extra sort of layer to add to the thickness or you can ball it up into a sausage shape or uh, a, 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 a sphere or something like that so that you can then start to build up a structure um, for a 3d shape that you want or you can do a 2d, 2D design like a um, you know a 2d picture and then you push the needle in so I don't know if you're going to be able to see don't know if it's going to focus. Let me see if I can get it to focus. Maybe not. Can you see? I know it's not focusing. But can you see some so like, quite dark patches? Some sort of bands across the needles there? They are barbs. And they are what um, felt the wool. When you push the needle into the actual felt they they um push the wool and make it matte with the wool underneath and that is what is felting the wool so that is why you can go from this fluffy thin wool to being able to have quite a, a tough rigid structure um, and this is my new obsession. I love it so much and I really want to make so many more animals, especially dogs. Um, and the charity that Daisy and Jasper came from, Hun Dogs, we are obviously dog, dog lovers and we're quite um, obsessed with our dogs. And people like to have things... Um, in that group that are related to their dogs so for example um, one member of the hand dogs community made calendars this year with pictures of our dogs on that we all then paid for and the profits went to the charity to be able to bring more dogs over from Hungary so I am hoping that if I get good at this I will be able to make figures of people's dogs for them at their request using lots of sample photos of their dogs and then sell them to the dog owners um, and all the profits can go to the dog charity and then maybe I'll start making the odd doggy for other people and actually start to earn a little bit of money from that so that's an idea but then I have lots of ideas like that. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I will show you the finished product when I've finished it. Obviously, there's a long way to go now. And I really am kind of making it up as I go along. But I never start a new craft um, small. I always start with a huge um, ambitious project because I 
I always think I'll be good at that. <laughs> so we'll see. Thanks for watching. Bye.